Okay, so in this video I'm going to explain what is happening with expanded octets and hybridization. So if we take a look at something like PCL3, PCL5, here in this example phosphorus is following the rule of 8 and is bonded to 3 chlorines. So 8 there. Eight there, eight there, and eight there. So here's my phosphorus bonded to three chlorines, and there you go. And I would count up the number of things that are attached. So I got one, two, three, four things attached. So my hybridization on my phosphorus would be sp3. Okay? So how can I bond to five electron or five chlorines when I don't have any more unpaired electrons? Well, this is what we believe is happening in the case of PCL3 or PCL5. So Here's phosphorus. Phosphorus is neon 3s2 3p3. So it has two electrons in the s and three in the p, just like nitrogen. And just like nitrogen in the last video, the electron could jump up into the 3p and I would hybridize that and I'd end up with an sp3 and it looks something like that okay but um, what happens in the case of PCL5 is that We can use more than just the P, we can use the D. So instead of exciting the electron into the P, I could excite the electron into the D. and then I would be hybridizing that. And so I would have 1s, 3p's, and 1d that would be involved. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them, one electron in each, and therefore I would need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more for the rule of 10. Or phosphorus could take one, two, three more for the rule of 8. And that is why phosphorus can follow the rule of 8 or the rule of 10. And if I go back and I look at my appendix um, F, See if it's still there. Nope. Did it go bye bye? They were messing with. Oh, nope, it's still there. If you look at this, um, uh, phosphorus on down can follow the rule of 8 or the rule of 10. Why can't. Why can't nitrogen follow the rule of 10? Why does nitrogen have to follow the rule of 8? Phosphorus can follow the rule of 10 or the rule of 8, but nitrogen can only follow 
the rule of 8. Well, the reason why that is is because phosphorus can access the d orbitals. Nitrogen does not have d orbitals. Why? Because nitrogen is in the second energy level. And in the second energy level, there are no 2Ds. So nitrogen can only follow the rule of 8. Okay? So PCL5 would look something like this. So 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. The phosphorus would have 10. And then count up the number of things that are attached to it. One, two, three, four, five. So now I'd say, okay, I've got one S. What's the maximum number of P's you can have? Three. Well, one plus three does not equal five. So <clears throat> I have to involve the D orbitals. And how many D's can I have? A maximum <coughs> of five. But I only need one of my D orbitals to equal five. So my hybridization is S, P, 3, D. Okay? So the hybridization on the phosphorus is S, P, 3, D. And that's what... I got, I can't seem to scroll up now, when, I'm just going to go back and then back again. That's what I got when I did my hybridization, right? SP3D. And I can figure it out just by doing the Lewis dot structure. I don't have to do that whole big chart up there. So if I was going to ask you <coughs> the hybridization on this guy, do my Lewis dot. So each fluorine has eight. And the iodine has 14. And how many things are attached to the fluorine? Seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven things are attached, so my hybridization has to add up to seven. So 1s, the maximum number of p's I can have is three. And so how many d's would it have to be? It would have to be three. Because one plus three plus three equals seven. So it would be sp3d3 hybridization on the fluorine.